we're now going to talk to someone else who is also doing, I think, really inspired work um, a little earlier in the process, but working with people um, all over the world and, and I think really redefining um, what social media tools can do, um, not just for sex workers, but, but really for communities um, who need a voice, who need exists, uh, who, who need um, uh, a, a space for expression, but also a, a, a space to work and interact and, and have community. Uh, so Eliza, I'm really thrilled uh, to have you here and I'm gonna turn the mic over to you. Awesome, thank you so much. I'm just shutting, uh, setting up my slides and they all go a bit crazy. Thank you so much, Ezra. That was such a wonderful talk and it echoes so many of the thoughts that Assembly 4 has. So I'm so thankful to be here among so many other people who care about the internet and the future of the internet. And one of the questions that have been put forward for today is how do we design new internet spaces that could lead to healthier, dis uh, healthier discussions, communities, and societies? This is why my talk is called Beyond De Decentralization. I will be discussing why technical solutions won't solve the issues that sex workers and other marginalized communities are facing on the internet. Before I get started, I will be discussing some subjects that can be quite distressing, primarily around state sanctioned abuse, sexual assault, violence, and rape. If you need to switch my talk off, please do that. That is completely okay. We need to be taking care of ourselves. And with that said, I want to acknowledge the traditional land owners of the land that I'm giving this talk on, the Wurundjeri Woi people of the Kulin Nation. I want to pay respect to their elders past and present. Sovereignty has never been ceded. It always was and it always will be Aboriginal land. So with that said, um, who am I? My name is Eliza Sorensen. I'm from Melbourne, Australia, and I'm a lot of different things to a lot of different people. I am disabled. I am queer. I'm a high school dropout and I am a musician. I'm an infrastructure and security engineer. I'm a co-founder and I'm a sex worker. I am one of three co-founders of Assembly 4. We are a collective of sex workers and technologists based out of Melbourne, Australia. We believe in building products to help sex workers thrive, not just survive. We founded Twitter, a sex worker friendly social platform and Trist, a modern advertising platform, both founded in 2018. Before we go forward, I want to ensure that we're all on the same page when it comes to definitions. There, it is an important context for the rest of this talk. And there has been a great deal of money poured into the conflation of sex work and sex trafficking. So according to the World Health Organization, sex workers are women, men, and transgendered people who receive money or goods in exchange for sexual services and who can consciously define those activities as income generating, even if they do not consider sex work as their occupation. Sorry, I didn't even give you that definition. <clears throat> so that brings us to what is human trafficking, um, human or labor trafficking, I should state. Human trafficking is the recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring, or receipt of people through force, fraud, deception, with the aim of exploiting them for profit. This is from the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime. So I also want to quickly touch on why I won't be referring to it as sex trafficking in my points. Sex trafficking isn't a subcategory of human trafficking, but a rhetorical ploy designed to delegitimize sex workers and deny the rights of sex workers. Now that we're on the same page of definitions, let's talk about the legal sex, the legal, legal models of sex work. The first model that I think most of you will be um, used to is criminalization. Criminalization enacts laws and penalties prohibiting the exchange of sex for money or other resources. This model is usually supported by sex worker exclusionary radical feminists or otherwise known as SWERFs, ab abolitionists, and a fair amount of the not-for-profit not industrial complex in the United States. Then there is the Nordic model. The Nordic model, which you might have heard as either the equality model or partial decrim, which I should very much point out, it is neither of those things. This criminalizes 
the targeting of the client. So sex work is in theory decriminalized, but under this model, sex workers are usually heavily surveillanced by um, police and other authorities. The legalization model, which is what I work under, is government regulation of sex work through legislation. Third parties often determine the rules in which workers and clients interact. I have to have what's called a SWA, which is a business number provided by the business registry in Melbourne. And decriminalization, which is what everyone, every sex worker is pushing for. Decriminalization removes and repeals municipal codes and penalties relating to the sex trade for both workers and clients. Decriminalization is the model supported by sex workers as it is, has the best health, safety and well-being outcomes, not just for sex workers, but for society. This is also supported by the World Health Organization, Amnesty International, ACLU and Human Rights Watch, just to name a few. We know for certain that the criminalization of sex work and the sex trade in general doesn't work. Criminalization exposes sex workers to abuse and exploitation by law enforcement officials, such as police officers. Human Rights Watch is documented in criminalized environments. Police officers harass sex workers, extort bribes, physically and verbally abuse sex workers, or even rape and coerce sex from them. Sex workers are at the intersection of the most marginalized communities. This is state sanctioned violence, plain and simple. Now, speaking of more state sanctioned violence, let's talk about HR 1865 or allow states and victims to fight online sex trafficking act and stop enabling sex trafficking act, also known as the foster sester package. Foster sister was signed into law by former President Trump on April 11th, 2018. Among other things, this opens online platforms to new criminal and civil liabilities for hosting content about sex trafficking at both the federal and state levels. This applies globally and in situations where there's no indication of coerced sex trafficking of adults or minors. One of the other things this law does is it changes the law retroactively. An online platform could be prosecuted under federal and state law or even held civilly liable for posting content created before foster sister. So if you are a sex worker, um, you know, in 20, uh, 2002, some of this stuff could still be hit. Foster sister was widely criticized, not just by sex workers, but by the Department of Justice, Woodhull Freedom Foundation, Wikimedia Foundation, the Electronic Frontiers Foundation and the ACLU. These organizations claimed that foster sister was fundamentally broken and it was a direct threat to safety of sex workers and would have chilling effects on freedom of speech, not just for sex workers, but for the general community. <clears throat> and you know what? A lot of these concerns that the organizations had were completely founded. The crushing criminal and civil liability created by Foster Sesta has incentivized online platforms to over-censor their users out of fear of being held potentially liable. Even capture services are afraid of the nipple. Lawmakers said this bill, Foster Sesta, was about protecting those vulnerable to sex trafficking. The research this bill was based on was incredibly flawed and conducted by individuals and groups who had financial and political stake in the continued criminalization and oppression of sex workers. In reality, the passing of Foster Sesta produced predictable outcomes, at least what was predictable to sex workers and these organizations who were fighting it. Law enforcement reported that the increased difficulty of tracking, human, uh, tracking victims and prosecuting uh, human traffickers had it just increased. They didn't have the platforms to find these cases anymore. Mass deplatforming, censorship, and increased surveillance of sex workers, queer and disabled people, specifically on United States owned and based platforms. Increased violence towards sex workers by clients and exploitative third parties due to the passing of Foster Sesta. So now that we have some shared context, I want to talk a little bit about Twitter. In 2018, just before Foster's sister had passed, Assembly 4 launched a Mastodon instance called Twitter.at in direct response to the increased deplatforming and censorship of the sex work community online, which was resulting in direct offline harm. For those, who were, uh, for those of you who have never encountered Mastodon, Mastodon is an open source decentralized social media network software that allows various fringe communities who are being restricted on traditional platforms 
to start their own instance and maintain their communities. As um, Ethan mentioned before, right wing uh, white supremacists are also uh, using this technology. So it's not just sex workers. Um, Gab started up in a Macedon instance. There is queer artists and erotic artists who started Humbler, which is now being brought into Sindler. Um, for sex workers, Twitter and our ability to access social platforms and these tools is crucial to our ability to survive, not just as individuals, but as communities who are trying to organize worldwide. Boss <sighs> Sesta passed on the 11th of 2018. This is going to be a little different because you guys are a day behind me, but three years, one month, and three days ago. It really wasn't that long ago. Bossa Sesta is not the first or the last time sex workers will be targeted by the state. I know these topics are difficult and they are complicated and they're literal centuries worth of racist, misogynistic, and anti-sex work propaganda, which will take time and deliberate work to unpick. But in the meantime, sex workers have been punished and denied access to technology despite being the first adopters of it. This should be understood not only as censorship, but as a form of structural violence sanctioned by the state. Sorry. Recently, I was reading The Truth About Modern Slavery by Emily Kenway. She puts it plainly. Sex work happens. If you want to stop it entirely, then address the deep socioeconomic reasons for it instead, of, instead of making those who do it more impoverished, endangered, and stigmatized. Since 2010, the US government has awarded significant grants to combat human and sex trafficking. Due to the difficulty in locating victims of human trafficking, this funding is often extremely easy to access and has very little reporting or compliance um, requirements. The primary requirement is that the grant recipients sign an anti-prostitution pledge. The anti-prostitution pledge means that these organizations are unable to advocate for the rights of sex workers and the majority of recipients of these, majority of these recipients of the grants are religious groups, abolitionists and law enforcement who also receive funding from private sources. Erased, the impact of Foster Sester is a research paper developed in 2020 by sex worker activists and research collective Hacking and Hustling. The report suggests Foster Sester actually made individuals more vulnerable to human trafficking and exploitation. I want to remind you, lawmakers said this law was about protecting those vulnerable to sex trafficking. Technical solutions are not the silver bullet to offline problems. And we need to stop pretending like creating a social network is going to, to fix it. It's not, it is one piece of the puzzle in organizing. As a society, we need to stop falling for and perpetuating false narratives, especially against sex workers and human trafficking victims. Sex workers' rights must be prioritized, not only upheld within all advocacy groups, but prioritized prevent and reduce systemic inequality by addressing the conditions in which exploitation, harm, and violence is being created. This means addressing systemic inequality, such as having access to the basics of life, food, housing, access to medical care. And most importantly, new and existing legislation and policy must reflect the conclusions drawn by credible academic research based on harm reduction. It, I don't believe it is good enough for us to accept what the government is giving us because quite frankly, the data is flawed and incorrect and putting people really at harm. One of the ways you can fund, you can help us and is by funding organizations who not only advocate for the rights of sex workers, but work with sex workers and do not conflate sex work and sex trafficking. Swap USA, Swap Behind Bars, Red Canary Song, The Heal Project, Prostasia Foundation, Black Sex Workers Collective, Butterfly Collective, and Hacking and Hustling, whose information today gave me the ability to get this talk together. Um, yeah, thank you very much for uh, having me here.
Thank you so much for that, Eliza. It's it's really um, important, I think, to to put this situation in, in context. And I think that reminder um, for all of us who, who are really interested in this question of different internets, understanding that that has to be part of a much larger conversation about fixing offline problems and taking them seriously. I think that's an incredibly useful caution. I also really appreciate every time I've talked with you, you've helped me sort of understand um, the terms that we're using uh, and understanding why human trafficking and sex trafficking mean very, very different things and, and, and why human trafficking is the term that we should be using and sort of thinking through this. Uh, I, I also think I now finally get um, the, the difference between legalization and decriminalization, which has taken me a while to, to sort of get my head around. So you actually use the terms opposite from how we tend to use it around marijuana in the United States, which is where decriminalization. Yeah, Australia has a really weird way as well for that. So definitely. Yeah. Understand. 